I do just want to briefly touch on the fact, much commented on, uh, that the Tory front bench were wearing their masks again. <laughs> Important <laughs> is, story, but... <laughs> it's the most ridiculous development of recent weeks, which is that the desperation to import like US style mask culture wars, <laughs> even though we're <laughs> in a completely different place in terms of COVID than a lot of places in the US are, has just been so embarrassing. I mean, so the big development is since kind of Sajid Javid has to had to give that kind of steady as she goes speech a few weeks ago, trying to stave off pressure to introduce plan B and all the rest of it, suggesting that he would start to wear his mask around and all the rest of it. I believe it's now become mandatory for people to wear masks in Parliament at the moment, but excluding MPs still, yeah. <laughs> which is a, a great little double standard. Um, but no, you had the Tory front bench at least showing up with a few notable exceptions. I think Jacob Rees Mogg and a handful of others um, didn't actually go for it. Uh, but then a lot of backbenchers just not wearing them whatsoever. And then, of course, the images on the flip side of all Labour, you know, sufficiently kind of masked up as some sort of great statement, <laughs> as if we didn't watch the Labour Party conference yeah. a couple of weeks ago where they were all sat cheek by jowl without a mask in sight. I mean, it's just utterly ridiculous. And I think the attachment now to masks is, is fascinating. First of all, this idea that masks are the only thing that stand between us and COVID cases, you know, shooting through the roof is absolutely ridiculous. Even a proper supporter of the masks policy will concede it's a relatively minor measure you yeah. know, in the grand scheme of things. And yet you had uh, Billy Bragg this week saying that he, does, <laughs> he always wears his mask around. I think he was talking about ordering his breakfast. They asked him why he was wearing the mask. And like, so they don't think I'm one of those Tories. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so stupid. But again, it feels like the the more we edge out of this pandemic, the more desperation there is on the kind of lockdown fanatic set to claw back some of that kind of moral yeah. pomp that they had over the course of the past few years by trying to claim that this government is just trying to kill people. They don't want to let that go. Hashtag like. Tory genocide. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's it's funny that even the most, you know, the one of the strongest arguments, not that I agree with it, but one of the arguments that has to be made for masks is a kind of behavioural science argument that it reminds people that there's a pandemic, that it reminds people to be careful rather than the actual um, effect of putting a piece of cloth on yeah, your face. Which in the context of a government that is blue in the face, you know, stating that it follows the science is is a mismatch. You know, we, you know that elder people on the front bench have pulled that mask out of their jacket that they've worn five times in the last few days. You know, everyone was laughing about the fact that Boris Johnson couldn't keep his over his nose. You know, there's, there's like, we know that masks only really work in a kind of, in a very beneficial way if you do it hospital style with fresh ones. And, you know, I remember when I was uh, uh, vaccinating people, you get trained in how to remove them and how to put them back on. Of course, no one's doing that. But in a, you know, a government, putting up a snood in front of you. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> gov- you know, this uh, in particular, I think someone like Boris Johnson, who started off at, you know, it has had an about turn in a very short space of time, began the pandemic. Okay, he's been criticised for it, saying, I'm going to carry on shaking people's hands. And at least, even if it was silly in some points, maintaining that sense of normal life is a good thing to fight for. Mm. You know, and mask, wearing masks and covering our faces is not normal life, is now doing, as, as Tom says, this kind of very gesture politics stance that is just about looking like, you know, and sitting next to Jacob Rees Moss, who's unmasking the other side of him. It's just like, for God's sake, the, the the country is not so stupid, I think this is a key point, as to think, all right, pandemic's over if you all turn up without masks. Give people a little bit more credit to suggest that this whole obsession with behavioural science and, and messaging and comms and imaging and kind of symbolism around mask wearing is, you know, we're not Pavlov's dogs. We're not just going to repeat where people have a sense of, of wearing masks where it's appropriate and binning them and returning to normality in most circumstances.